help, Heather, I just went on vacation. I came home, I stepped on the scale. I maybe even waited the 72 hours that you recommend, but my weight is up. I can't believe it. I was so mindful when I ate. I maybe even tracked. I got in lots of movement. What's going on? All right, so here's the deal. A lot of my coaching clients right now are coming back from various vacations. Like literally, I think in the last two weeks, I've had at least three or four of them come back from vacation. Every single person's weight was up. Male, female, it did not matter. People that tracked, people that didn't track. So the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna just kind of drive this point home. When you have four people who go on vacation and all four people come back and they're all up in weight. They all were on top of eating correctly as well as they could. They were getting in physical fitness. They were doing all those things. Does, so does that mean that that is probably common or uncommon? Say it with me, common, right? So you're not the outlier. You're not the unusual specimen that goes on vacation and strangely gains weight. <laughs> you are what I like to call the norm, okay? So first off, let's dispel this idea that just because you tracked, just because you ate what you thought was an appropriate amount, just because you moved your body, you think you did everything right on vacation, means that there shouldn't be weight gain on the scale when you get back, okay? Even if you went in with the right expectations. Heather, my expectation is I'm going to maintain. <gasps> I came back and the scale was up. All right, so here's what I saw. The male client, nine pounds up. By the end of the week, he was at his lowest weight be, that he had been, period. He had actually got all nine pounds back off and had hit a new lower t weight. The female client that was also nine pounds up, she ended up getting back to her original pre-vacation weight within a week. Um, and the other clients all did the same. It took about a week, week and a half. They were back to where they were. But here's what normally happens. We think we were so good. We thought we tracked. We did everything correctly. We come back. We wait the 72 hours that Heather told us. We step on the scale and we are just beside ourselves. Very upset. One of my clients was funny. She said, Heather, you would have thought I was a toddler. She's like, I did so good. I deserve better than this. Why did this happen to me? Right? She kind of went into that meltdown mode. And I said, you know, before we work together, would you have allowed that thought to spiral you out of control and cause you to actually go raid the pantry? And she's like, oh, definitely. I said, okay, so what you would have done is you would have taken a temporary water weight fluctuation and you would have actually forced it to become your new reality. And how many of us have done that, right? We go on vacation, um, we have our weight go up when we come back, we then freak out about it, we feel it's unjustified, and then we eat in a way to show the scale we mean business. <laughs> I'm going to get back at that scale for going up on me on my vacation. So let's talk about the reality for a second, right? The reality is, and I don't know if you even know this, um, there is actually something known as jet bloat. There, it's an actual phenomenon. So if you fly to a place, you fly to Europe, you fly to the Caribbean, you fly somewhere, you immediately create a scenario where you are going to more than likely have bloat. You're going to retain water. The cat, they've done scientific research on this. The cabin pressure actually causes blood to pool in your legs. You do not uh, cycle fluids correctly in the air. This is a very, very common thing, and it can take at least several days, if not a week, to completely re-regulate. So getting back to your normal eating, your normal drinking, not allowing your mind to sabotage you into doing something that's not helpful. Then, by the very nature of being away from home, you very well could have been eating more sodium, which would also cause water weight fluctuations. Another way to think about this, ask yourself a really honest question. You come back four pounds heavier. Did you really eat 14,000 calories above your maintenance calories to pack on four pounds of body fat? Did you really do that? Or do you maybe possibly think it's water retention and a bunch of other things going on that you have absolutely no control over? So the point of this video is a couple things. One, if you fly, know your weight will go up just from the pressure of the cabin, jet bloat. Secondly, know that if you go on vacation, more than likely your weight will be up when you get back. And then if it is, the last thing you want to do 
is actually solidify those results by going on a pantry dive because you're upset about what happened and you feel it wasn't justified. Instead, realize that you did not, in fact, eat 3,500 calories times the amount of pounds you're up above maintenance unless you had an all-out crazy eat fest the entire time you were gone. So what is that? It's water weight, it's fluctuation. Get back to your normal routine, give yourself a week, and it will go back down. Again, I'm sharing this with you because literally four or five of my clients have all had this exact same thing happen. I've had this conversation over and over and over again, which, which means this is common. And if it's common for them, it's common for you. And it means we should expect it and not be upset when it happens and know that the last thing we want to do is revert to behaviors that are going to actually make that weight stick versus go away. You have a fabulous day. I hope this helps with the scale after travel.